Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Readsy. Today we're going to be talking about how to start a short story. If you want just the basics about short stories, we've got an entire video just on how to write a short story, so I'll leave a link to that in the description and the cards. We also have videos on how to start a novel as well as how to start a scene, but today we're going to get into the specifics of how to start a short story. Number one, start as close to the inciting incident as possible. You know, I can say this about a scene, I can say this about a novel, but for a short story this is really important. In a short story it is, well, short, so you don't have a lot of space. If you spend an entire scene before getting to the inciting incident, aka the event that tips the dominoes and jumpstarts the plot, you are wasting a large percentage of the story. If you can put the inciting incident in the first scene, aim for the first paragraph even, or even the first sentence. A lot of short stories do have the inciting incident in the first sentence, so when in doubt, if you don't know where to start, start there. For example, from the story Above and Below by Lauren Groff, she'd been kept awake all night by the palm berries clattering on the roof, and when she woke to the sun blazing through the window, she'd had enough. It's subtle, but that is an inciting incident. Something has been jump-started, the main character has had enough, she's been propelled to do something. We don't know exactly what it is yet, but we have had an inciting incident. Number two, similar to that, you want to start as late on the timeline as possible. You might have a lot of backstory planned for the piece, but you want to start as late on the timeline as possible. Flashback can be a useful tool in the story, but in most cases you probably want to start quite late and look back. Short stories aren't usually the ideal form for a story that takes place over a very long period of time. There are exceptions to this, of course, in The Shell Collector by Anthony Doerr. Many of the stories span a long period of time and are told linearly. However, most stories usually will be strongest if started as close to the end of the story as possible. Now, you don't want to rely too much on flashback, but when writing a short story, you really are focusing on kind of a single event, and so that means that you're probably going to be focusing the story around the culmination of all the events that came before. Number three, consider the importance of a good first line. Again, for a novel it's great to have a good first line, but for a short story it's even more important. If you're trying to submit your short stories to magazines, editors have to go through so many submissions, and if you can grab them on the first sentence, that gives you a huge advantage. There is no one way to craft a good first line. Here are a few things you can consider. When in doubt, just use a strong, interesting image. You could start with some kind of narrative hook, something that is bizarre or strange or intriguing, or something that shows off kind of a strange voice or personality of the narrator. So for a couple examples, now there are so many examples of good first lines of short stories, but I went through some of the books on my shelf and pulled out a couple examples. So this first one, my wife could take your skin off with one glance. She was that excruciating. That's from Expecting by Emily Fridland. I've seen two things science can't explain. That's from Cake's Chicken by Bill Gaston. From Miranda July's collection, No One Belongs Here More Than You. In an ideal world, we would have been orphans. This is from something that needs nothing. If you pound a person's head against concrete, even if you're doing it only so they'll come to their senses, you will very likely end up hurting them. This is from Heads Against Concrete by Samantha Schweblin. Also from Samantha Schweblin's book A Mouthful of Birds, he and his father were a yellow animal, a single animal looking at itself in the mirror. That's from A Great Effort. This is a great example of an interesting image. As they put me to sleep, my mouth fills with the dust of the moon. That's from Eight Bites by Carmen Maria Machado. Brothers, I tell you, it is not easy to become radicalized in a seaside resort. This is from In Praise of Radical Fish by Alison McLeod. And as a final example, your father picks you up from prison in a stolen Dodge Neon with an eight ball of coke in the glove compartment and a hooker named Mandy in the back seat. That's from Until Gwen by Dennis Lee Hain. That one has the added pull of it being in second person, which immediately asks a lot of questions why the story is in second person and who is you. It can be a really good exercise to just brainstorm interesting first lines, and when in doubt you can use those as props. If you ever get to a point where you don't know what to write, you can try just building a story from one of those first lines. Number four is the title. It's always a great bonus to have a strong title, but with a short story you can kind of think of the title as almost another first line. You can catch people with the title and you can catch people with the first line, and ideally you can catch people with both. It's not part of the story in that it's not in the narrative, but it is still part of the story in that it's a word the reader reads and it's probably the first thing they're going to read, so you might as well start off strong. Even if, say, you don't manage to write the killer first line that you've always dreamt of, 
The title kind of gives you a second chance at that. We've got an entire video on titles, I will leave a link to that. But ultimately what you really just want to avoid are very common titles. I did find a list of the most common short story titles, so I will leave a link to that in the description. And all I can say is that I would highly advise against titling your short story home. And finally, number five, start with your character doing something interesting. A common pitfall of many short stories overall is that the characters just don't do anything. When in doubt, always give your character something interesting to do so that they can do that rather than just stand around. And might as well start with that thing. This way you're starting with motion. The character is already doing something and it's much more interesting to walk in on the character doing something interesting. No matter what it is, say they're collecting pine cones or churning butter or scaling a fish. It just gives the story energy right from the beginning rather than entering a story where the character is just observing. So those are five tips on starting your short story. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us and I'll see you in another video.